So here's the Pontiac overhead cam sprint six cylinder dual exhaust manifold. Pretty cool looking. It's like a tri y header kind of thing, I guess. Kind of, sort of. Uh, it's kind of a waste that they bothered putting dual outlets on it. So I can hold this in one hand. And they put this white pipe, I guess you call it, on it. Look how crushed down a thing is. It's, it's tiny. Holy crap. But that's what they came with. There was no dual exhaust system available for these things, as far as I know. Flip it over, you can see that it's, uh, this outlet's kind of ragged looking. I can't say that's corrosion. It might have always been like that. I don't know. I'm going to open it up anyway so they match. This one's slightly larger. This one measures just shy of two inches. Probably two inches with no carbon and rust on it. This one's more like one and three quarter at the opening with a slag or whatever it is. is. So I'll grind that open too, so they're both equal, and I'll try to take out any restrictions inside if I can see anything. It's kind of dark in there, but... Uh, and this heat riser valve is stuck shut too. Oh yeah. That can't be good for flow. So I'll probably take that out. And uh, like I said, I'll uh, generally port out whatever restrictions I see in here. You know, I have a header for it, but I don't know if I'm gonna put it on or not. Um, and I'll gasket match everything, just like you do on a V8. So let's uh, let's see how this goes. So just to document how much fun this has been, in case you've never done this before, you have to take the spring off this side. It was all corroded anyway. This is the uh, remnants of it right here. And this flapper is welded to the shaft. So you're gonna break the welds. One of mine was already broken. And then you have to drive this thing, where the hell is it, drive this thing out. Problem is, now that you've got the weld broken, you gotta grind the slag off it, or the weld jams up in that hole. Fun, fun, that's what I'm doing right now. Grinding, tapping, grinding, tapping, lots of fun. But then we get to our inevitable victory. Yay, she's out. And I will do something to plug those holes, whether I drill them and tap them, put a plug in it, or I weld them over, or something. I'll do something creative. So on this side, whoops, there's a sharp edge right there around the circumference of the opening. See it just past the hole to the uh, heat riser valve? If I get in there close. It's hard with crappy light. Yeah, there you go. See that edge right there? I mean, you gotta remember the exhaust is pushing out. So whatever it comes up against, restricts the flow. So anything you can do to smooth out edges or 90 degree surfaces, stuff like that, is going to increase the flow. I mean, we're not building a race car here. I'm not gonna port this thing and gain 20 horsepower. I mean, no, it's not like that, but every little bit helps, especially when you're dealing with, you know, 215 horsepower, which is what these sprint engines had. So this one anyway. So let's get to work on that and see how it looks. Okay, the first outlet is done. I, uh, you know, basically took the whole sharp edge off it, smoothed everything out, and uh, you know, significantly increased the size of the inside of the opening. I mean, when you've got uh, a big boss, I call it a boss, like this thing here. I mean, this is a ton of steel right here. It's very thick, so you can grind the crap out of it. Whereas on this side, you can't do as much because you're gonna blow through the side of it. And welding cast iron is, you know, a pain in the ass. So, you gotta tread lightly, but uh, you know, I, I took a significant amount of metal. I mean, it, it's easily an eighth inch, three sixteenths gone all around the circumference of this hole. So, I didn't open up the, uh, the ID here very much because you want the exhaust pipe to mate to it and seal. But you can see, I mean, compared to the old shots of it, that they took a ton out. So, it's gotta help the flow. I'll do the other side now, and then I'll concentrate on the uh, ports, matching them with the gaskets. So I'm not quite done with the second opening, but I just wanted to show how much material I'm taking out. You can see right there, get the light in there. I mean, it's exaggerating to get from the angle I'm on, but you can see it's taken out eighth inch anyway. So if you do that all the way around, I mean, that's quite a bit of material. And I'm, you know, rounding the opening up. You can see there's this one section right here I haven't done yet, but it's gross. I don't know what the purpose of that was, but 
yuck. So almost done. I just wanted to catch it while I uh, while it still exists. It's gonna be gone in a minute. And this right there, this plateau right here, where my finger is, way in there. Oh shit! Right there, where the uh, I can't really point it out. With All right, so let's see if I can do this with one hand. If I shine the light in there, and this piece of metal is pointing right here. Hey, hey, hey. Get earmuffs on too, like can't even hear myself talk. Right there, that spot right there. I flattened it up quite a bit. I mean, again, if you look at how much metal is gone, that's a big difference. You know, and it should improve the flow uh, quite a bit. I just don't want to blow through the back in here where my finger is. That's, you know, you don't want anything poking through there because then you're gonna leak. <laughs> so, that's it. All right, we're done. You can see I ported it pretty heavily inside. Uh, both sides. I welded up the uh, heat riser holes. Isn't that beautiful? I laid on a secret too. I, uh, I blew a hole through it. <laughs> I went too far when I was trying to get this angle. <laughs> so I had a MIG welded up. Luckily it MIG welded. Most manifolds you have to stick weld. You know, uh, use a nickel rod or TIG or whatever, but I MIGged it and it MIGged fine. I MIGged these too and they MIGged perfect, so. I'm pretty confident it'll be okay. I went back and regrounded on the inside and uh, seems pretty strong. So hopefully I won't get it running, heat cycle it once or twice, and all of a sudden that whole thing falls out and it sounds like a motorcycle, but uh, we'll see. So that's it, that's all done. I need to do the, the head side now. And uh, then I'll sandblast it and take all the broken bolts out and all that crap. So. That's pretty much it though. I mean, like I said, you can see I took a lot of metal out. There's metal in there now because I was grinding it uh, when I welded that. But it's way bigger than it was inside. Way larger is the proper term. And again, we're not building a race car. We're just trying to take out all the ugliness and make it, you know, fairly large and modify it the best we can without, you know, recreating the wheel. So if you want, you know, total performance, go with a header. But if you want something that's just better than stock, there's no reason not to do this. It just takes time. Just don't blow a hole through it like I did and be a dummy. That's all. So <laughs> if you, either that or have your MIG welder handy. So that's it. Let me uh, finish the process. I don't know if I'm going to video that or not, but we'll see. Well, I guess I am going to do the uh, port side today after all. I got a little bit more time to kill. So all we're doing here is taking the gasket. You know, I'm using the old gasket. Hold it up to the head, uh, the manifold rather. Uh, I'm saying head because that's how you do an intake manifold or a, I mean, uh, yeah, intake manifold, intake port, same basic thing. You hold up to the head, you bolt it down, you scribe it, and then you just grind to the line. All we're doing here is the same thing, just grind it out to the line, you know, you're not making a huge difference. Uh, one thing though is, if you see right here, there's a big raised lump. I took it out on this side. What that is, is, these is where, like a California car that would have uh, California emissions, they would drill and tap this for a uh, steel like a tree for the air injection reactor. It's the air pump and it would pump oxygen into the exhaust manifold. And uh, this car didn't have it. They're not drilled and tapped, as you can see. I think I got my phone under there. So the bosses are there, but they're not really doing anything. So I'm an Oldsmobile guy. And that's one of the first things we grind out of the uh, Oldsmobile heads. They have them in the head side, uh, you know, the head rather than the manifold. So we grind them out. So like I said, you can see if I get my flashlight, where the hell is my flashlight? Uh, here it is. See the lump? That is a big lump. I mean, again, it's not gonna give you 20 horsepower. It may give you two, it may give you one, you know, it may give you nothing, but can't hurt taking it out. So as long as you're not gonna blow through to open air like I did on the other side of the manifold, you should be fine. So that's a typical head porting, manifold porting trick. So I'll take those out and uh, go along my way. This port on the end is weird. Uh, you can grind it out to here if you want. That's where it scribes. Uh, the port in the head is very similar. So I'm not gonna go crazy. I'll probably just lay it back. Cause I read online, one guy ported his head and did all that work. It didn't make much difference anyway, but you can see both sides do have it. It's weird. So, you know, and there's a lot of meat here you can take out too. There's the scribe line right there. And you get this big lump. So I'll, again, I'll probably just lay it back. You don't have to go insane. Just help the flow get out of the head. That's all. So let me get back to it. So here's a couple of things I wanted to spotlight. If you look in this port, you see how the uh, way up inside there, it gets kind of triangular shaped. Where the hell's my camera? There we go. Yeah, see up inside 
this port right here gets kind of triangular shaped up top. There was a lot of casting flash and a ridge there, so I ground that out. Uh, let me get back in there. Oh, there we go. Ah! Yeah, you kind of see it better now. It was a lot smaller. So you gotta, you know, I have these long carbides on my grinder, and that's a fast cut bit. See how it only has this spiral? So it cuts through this thing really fast. But you can see that, uh, I mean, you can see now, I ground it a lot bigger. You know, this side doesn't have that problem. It's just a shaped port I think it like nice light in here I guess you can see it better but uh, that comes through maybe you see it better that way but you can see this one's triangular shaped and this one is not and on this port for whatever reason it was uh, a hell of an obstruction I don't see if I can get this aggy place okay so if you look on this port you can see it uh, it's pretty oval shaped all the way through. I took out the uh, EGR bump. I mean, we call them EGR bump. They're actually AIR bumps. I took that out. This side still has it in there. And if you look down this throat, it's pretty oval shaped all the way down, right? Let's see if I can get this in there. Yeah, it's pretty much oval shaped all the way back. There was a big lump, like right here. And if you look on the back, you can see the boss with the choke. I think it was that. They just cast it extra thick on the inside. You know, there's no reason it has to be that thick. So I ground it all out. I mean, if you look at this side, it still has the AAR bump right there, and it still has the boss on this wall for the uh, choke or whatever it is. Let's see if we can see it better. Yeah, see how small it gets right there, restricted? So, I mean, which would you rather flow through? This cavern here or this one? I mean, if I pull back, you probably see it a lot better. Yeah, see it? There's the AAR bump there. There's another ridge right there. This side is all gone. I took it all out. It doesn't take very long to do this. Just in this case, you do need a long carbide like that. Uh, long carbides you can buy online, McMaster Car. If you have a tool vendor who sells you uh, nuts and bolts and carbides, I'm sure we can get you long ones too. They're not a whole lot more money than the regular one. Uh, carbides are expensive, but uh, you know, if you want to do this stuff yourself, look into that. It's uh, very, very helpful. You know, again, there's, there's hogged out and that's stock restrictive. So it means a big ridge right there. It's like a lump. So I just wanted to Highlight that for posterity. All right, back to work. Okay, we're done. All the ports are hogged out and these end ports, I uh, didn't go crazy on them, but I took out the bump and opened them up to the gasket. So you can see they're done. Uh, something funny happened at the end. I mean, depends on your sense of humor, I guess, but this thing broke off on me just before I finished. I was doing the last port and then bam, Central pneumatic. I'm thinking that's Harbor Freight crap, right? Twelve dollar grinder. Well, that's what you get. Huh? Yikes! Snap the shaft off. Central pneumatic. So I finished it up with this old Cornwell grinder I had. I have a bunch of them. I don't know. Another cheap ass one here. I don't know who this is, but whatever. For twelve dollars, you know, I used the crap out of it all day, and I'm sure I did other things with it other days. So that's it. This thing's done. Now I have to get the broken bolts out and then sandblast it and uh, take the choke apart, make that all work and uh, da 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 But we're, uh, we're almost done, almost done. We're in the home stretch. So hope you enjoyed your foray into uh, making dust. Man, this is dirty work. Oh my God, this is dirty, Ugh. But uh, anyway, I'm done. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Uh, if you didn't, well, sorry, I wasted your time. <laughs> Talk to you later.